Electronic dance music is more popular than ever. The scene has grown bigger, stronger, and more diverse. It brings me to another level. This is the magic, the music at the end, you know. And there's growing interest in the origins of techno. People are like discovering my old generator stuff. And I had to wait 30 years in order for a whole new generation to kind of come to it. The roots of techno are being rediscovered and celebrated. It shows that, first of all, we were ahead of our time. Uh, I was ahead of my time. It's time to find out more about the history of the genre. We'll start in Berlin. Where else but the capital of techno? Closing time doesn't exist here. You can party all night long at clubs like Tresor. More than 30 years after its founding, Tresor is still considered the epicenter and birthplace of the techno movement. When it comes to techno... You come to this place. I think that uh, is one of the most uh, important uh, club in Europe. I think that techno was the force that shaped Berlin into the image that we have of it today. In 1989, before the fall of the wall, Berlin was a divided city. In the socialist East, the state controlled and regulated almost all aspects of life. In secret, however, the GDR's youth tuned into what was going on in the capitalist West. Here, on the other side of the wall, in the enclave of West Berlin, people enjoyed a special status and much more freedom. Yet they felt isolated and cut off. It was actually very important that the wall came down, that there was actually more space in town, you know. Everybody from the east came to the Golden West to find out what's happening there, and everybody from the west tried to start its, its own research in the east. It was an atmosphere in, in those days, so techno really nobody cared. Dimitri Hegemann and others of the West Berlin underground scene explored abandoned places in the former border area that had lain fallow for decades. And we were really lucky to find a location that was very near located near the wall, actually in the heart of Berlin. This building was in an area where nobody could go, even from the east side. It was like in this very close to the wall, so it was like untouched over 45 years. Techno literally took place underground in the basement vault of a former department store with extremely loud music fast and hard beats. And when we opened it, it was packed from the first day, you know, and it was really a coincidence that this music was just happening. Acid House or House didn't make it, but techno, that was the thing the people liked, and they were also ready to dance, you know. For a long time, no one really cared where the music came from or who was playing it. Since its beginnings, DJs from Detroit like Jeff Mills or Juan Atkins have been playing at Trezor. They come from black communities in the declining U.S. American metropolis, and they're the ones shaping what is now known as the Sound of Berlin. Hi, my name is Blake Renee Baxter. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, USA. The uh, techno house soul capital of the United States, I suppose. <laughs> Detroit is known for its auto industry and music scene. It's now also considered the place where the first techno tracks were created. This is often forgotten. You know, Detroit comes and goes and comes and goes like it's, it, like, it's like a cycle. I added the funk. <laughs> the soul and the funk from Detroit. The decline of industry in Detroit and the dawn of a new technological age inspired Juan Atkins and other musicians in the early 80s to experiment with futuristic sounds. They mixed European electro music with African-American dance beats. 
I guess the arrival of the technological revolution, so to speak. It was uh, the industrial uh, age kind of came to a close. And by Detroit being one of the major industrial hubs in America, the city was kind of like just depleted because the robots took over most of the manufacturing jobs. They experimented with new electro sounds and were celebrated as techno rebels. It was just a, a kid and later some, some more kids just uh, tinkering with, with this new technology. You know, a lot of this was kind of spontaneous. I mean, nobody had a blueprint or a plan. I mean, we had an idea of things, uh, what we wanted to do, sort of like an experiment. You mix a lot of different ingredients, and the result came out 10 times better than we thought it would come out, you know? Change of location. The closing night of Alan Oldham's art show in Berlin. He's DJing his own music at the event. Now based in Berlin, Oldham started out as a radio host in Detroit, later illustrated for indie labels, and then became a DJ. My art has always been the way it is, but it just seemed to, when techno came along, it seemed to fit along with the uh, Afrofuturistic or the science fiction element. Fascinated by the Detroit techno scene, Oldham got involved as a member of the legendary DJ collective Underground Resistance, known as UR. No one man was bigger than the music. And the, the music it was the message, not the personality. And we all had uh, code names, and I chose uh, T-1000 for mine. He was the, the cutting edge nanotechnology Terminator. Superior to Arnold in every way, right? So that, that's the, the basis behind my DJ name. In the early 90s, Oldham created a comic book vision of techno as salvation in a dystopian world a commission for the label Plus 8. They asked me to do a comic book for their label. It's like, hey man, you know, just come up with something cool. You are is there. The Detroit police are robots, but you are hates the robot cops. So there you go. The others in the resistance group, they're trying to restart this thing called the random noise generator, which creates music, creates techno music. And uh, they install the device and then the the random noise generator shakes to life, and then you see all the electricity and sound waves coming out of it, and here's all the, the sound waves, techno. And it's touching everywhere on the planet. That's basically what that was. This is how techno conquered the world. Absolutely, but from, from Detroit. The hype around the new sound from Detroit soon made its way around the globe, enchanting music freaks, promoters, and night owls, especially in Berlin. DJs from the U.S. were flown in to get the city's dance floors churning. But in the U.S., the scene remains firmly rooted in the underground, never gaining traction in the mainstream. So why did it blow up in Europe? The white audience are, were the ones who liked techno. A lot of black people did not like it. They did not get it. There was no rapping in it. They, there was no singing. It, it was all one thing. It was repetitive. And this proved to be the key to Berliner's hearts. Techno became the new soundtrack of the city. When it became Berlin, then it became centralized. And then more Detroit guys started coming over. You know, Trezor was was crucial in this. The knowledge that techno stems from African-American communities has largely escaped public consciousness, mainly because it was in Berlin where techno found mainstream appeal. I think when the guys developed the Detroit sound in Detroit, nobody cared about the music. And it was the right forum for them to play their music here and they helped a lot to build up the 
whole DJ culture, the German DJ culture again. They motivated a lot of people. Paul van Dyck was born in 1971 in an industrial town in the GDR and grew up in East Berlin. Like many young Germans, he fell in love with the new sound. It's simple, really. I play the music because I love it. I'm a total fanatic. I really don't DJ because I can make any money with it. A few years later, Paul van Dyck had his breakthrough, becoming one of the most successful DJs in the world, and the money started flowing. Techno for the masses. Years before, it was very slow. There was really not a real nightlife, a happy nightlife. And when house came over, as it out, and then techno, it was great, you know. We've had weekends where I think about 10,000 people in Berlin moved from one club to the other club, you know. The rest of the story is that it became too known. We tried to keep people away, but it didn't work out. Journalists came in, also international magazines started writing about the Tresor Club and about this movement techno in Berlin. And then we had a problem that too many people came here. They just wanted to see what is new. It became a bit touristic after six months. But the first six months of Tresor is history, you know. Female DJs like Ellen Alien also started taking off. She's one of the most important representatives of the Berlin techno scene to this day. Ellen Alien produces electronic music and runs the label B Pitch Control. Trezor is like a second home to her, although her roots are in hip hop. The elusive underground scene of techno fascinated her from the start. That's why uh, actually I went in techno clubs to go far away from the hip hop scene because the hip hop scene was really rude. It's not because I could dance so well on techno, I didn't know how to move because it was too fast for me as a hip hopper. <laughs> and then after a while I learned dancing on techno music. I understood how I can move my body fast. <laughs> the Love Parade brought the movement to the streets. What started with only a few hundred visitors soon drew hundreds of thousands, many under the influence of the party drug ecstasy. Ravers from all over the world came to Berlin to be part of the spectacle. 1999 saw an incredible 1.5 million people attend. You know, back in the rave times, it was just a lot of drugs. People did parties, you know, whatever, whatever. But now it's an emphasis on community. It's an emphasis on kind of leaving things better than when you found it. And I think that, that a lot of young people want to create their own spaces. And this is the, the soundtrack for it. But what does techno actually mean? To find out, we delved into the archive of youth culture in Berlin. Here, documents, fanzines, magazines, posters, and more are collected, keeping the history of youth and subculture alive. Here we have the Atonal Festival program from 1990. You could say that this was maybe the first techno festival in Germany. The term techno occurs, but not so often. They talk mostly of house here. But at one point they start speaking of the so-called techno scene. The word is in quotation marks, so it wasn't yet really clear what they really meant by techno. It has a different meaning for everyone. I mean, you know, techno can also be uh, melodic and it can also be chill. But for me, primarily, techno means more aggressive. Techno is everything you haven't imagined yet. That's according to Jeff Mills, legendary DJ and musician. Poetic, yes, but not quite the answer Anita Yori has been looking for. She works at Berlin's University of the Arts and has been researching techno for several years. In German, techno with a capital T has 
a huge meaning. It's an umbrella term which collects, let's say, all underground events and music-related um, happenings and also the music itself is part of it. It has something you can identify it or you can explain it's something that is underground, something that is um, locally organized. But this is a huge confusion, especially in international um, circumstances, because in English, techno, with not a capital T, um, means simply a genre, a music genre, one of the genres of electronic dance music. Techno is like so first so like so like so like so and foremost, the beat in techno is harder. Compared to house, techno features less of the solely vocals and is generally faster, harder, and darker. For some, though, techno still means excessive drug consumption. There will always be this simplification of the club culture, that it's just about taking drugs, that it's just about hedonism and escapism. But I think now in the 21st century we cannot say that anymore. Most of the people, they go out because of the club, they go out because of the lineup, they go out because of the music, they go out because of the atmosphere. There was always this link, this idea of which we all think about what's going on in the air, you know, what's going on in the space and trying to connect with it in a way, trying to be not afraid of it. The music has something robotic and can be very distorted too. <laughs> Techno is also minimal. The machines, they made also that kind of spacey sounds. A lot of electronic music is based on the gear that you use. 303, Roland, 909, faster than 140 BPM. And that's why it's called techno, because it's technologically advanced gear. It's underground at the end. For Juan Atkins, it all started in the underground, where he began spinning records in the 1980s. He's since become legendary in the techno scene, but status was never a big deal for him. My job is to entertain because, you know, I come from an era where, you know, before the DJ was famous and this big uh, the DJ's got all his acc accolades, all your job was to do is to keep the floor busy or to keep people smiling and happy and dancing. And a lot of that is still in me uh, from when I first started. These days, Juan Atkins fills not only dance floors, but also the foyer of Berlin's venerable Philharmonie. Actually, I had no idea that I would even be leaving Detroit or going around the world, you know. From the underground to the hallowed halls of classical music, the Strom Festival brings together the entire spectrum of electronic music, turning techno into high culture. The time has come that this music is being welcomed here as well. That's quite a statement. Techno built its own institutions, and now we're at a level where one set of institutions notices the other and see, like, well, maybe it's interesting what you're doing. And we're still in the Philharmonie Berlin, the lights go on. It shows that, first of all, we were ahead of our time. Uh, I was ahead of my time, I think. And it, and, and it shows the, the staying power. Because I had this vision of the future, then it's, it's kind of perpetuating itself now because that was the kind of the idea. From Detroit, through Berlin, to the world and back. At the Movement Festival, a celebration of electronic music, techno is rediscovering its roots. Does techno get you moving? Let us know in the comments.